at the, the digestive part where we take in we take in sensation, we 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 feel it, we make it it's personal, we have a relationship with it, it's 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 we like it or we don't like it. There's some orientation to that where we want to magnify have more of that or less of that in our life. So there's some connection or attachment. We then digest that, we, we rearrange it, like our digestion takes apart our food and we rearrange it and may build our structural physical body. Well, we take apart our sensations, rearrange them, and, and with the, put labels on them, and you know, we, we name things and we use language as human beings as in, a, in a linguistic structure to restructure and to think, right? to string those things together through our association cortex and our, our language cortex. And, and from there, we, we want to take action. We have the, the water element, the kidneys, the will, the seed of the jing, the, where those, those M-state minerals that we breathe in and make our own in the heart and program together in complex structures, perhaps planar structures based on the science of them. And then we have this planar, this planar uh, cell membrane that's experiencing that has them in it and planes of water, sheets of water outside that that may give us more expansiveness to, to that consciousness, more spaciousness. Um, so at, at the kidney we're dealing with determining our action, our will, our, and memory comes in there too. And we, you know, memory is an act active process both in the memorizing and in the remembering, the recall. Uh, and then from there it goes to the liver, the, the wood element, which is is about the vision, about the it's attached to the visual sense. It's about wisdom, about enough knowledge, enough knowledge and 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 will together to to build wisdom and and to take the right action, to see what action, to see multiple possibilities, and and to like the frontal cortex to plan, to structure our actions. In, in a wise way, mm -hmm. and then that feeds back to our sensorium where we see the results of our action. We transform the world with our actions and we see the transformation. We take in the light of that transformation we've created and we transform it into our, into our sensation, our, our into a meaningful interpretation, we read it. Um, so that's the cycle. In the cell, so we have the, the sensory apparatus that sticks out from the cell membrane into that structured water. It actually will, because it's protein, it's going to shape that, that liquid crystal water. And as vibrations come in, let's say it's, it's a molecule coming into the layer of structured water, the vibrations that that molecule, the shape that it puts out, interacts with the shape of our sensors, and that's where the energy meets and gives us a signal that's transformed from an electromagnetic signal in the water of shape to uh, material form, movement, shape, in movement in the cell membrane where the consciousness primarily resides, where we can now feel or see that, whether we're a cell or a human or a cosmic cell, that, that our, our galaxy is just one Thank of many galaxies. Thank goodness we have in. to think about these things. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's all happening, it's all happening. simultaneously. Uh, there's simultaneously on different scales, you know, from cell to, to, to organism, from on different scales of frequency. Our breath cycle is designed where it will go into a harmonic 0.1 hertz frequency. That's a breath every 10 seconds. One inhale an exhale cycle in 10 seconds, a nice, slow, relaxed cycle. If we get close to that, which we'll only do if we're relaxed, it'll lock in. It's like a regulatory mechanism that the body has to, why? The body has very good reasons when it, when it shows a function that wants to be right there, has, there's some adaptive reason. We do that because it's helped us survive, help life survive for, you know, with breathing life for all these millions of years. And, and that, when it goes to, to the heart, locks in with a one second cycle, or one hertz cycle of the heart rhythm, which sends the strongest electrical signal to the body through the blood vessels. It actually travels faster than the pulse, the pressure wave of blood. 
And it, we know from research that it's essential that that electrical wave changes the lactic acid orientation in the blood vessel wall so that the blood vessel is prepared to re be relaxed and expand and allow the pulse wave to follow through. Actually, 50% of the blood flow to an organ is dependent on that electrical signal from the heart. Only half of it will get through if that signal isn't there. So if we're in an electromagnetic field from man-made technology, that can overpower that. It, it can be a thousand times stronger than the heart's field. Our body was never prepared, never designed genetically for that kind of environment. So like an electric blanket keeps you warm, but it stops the circulation, stops half of it. Well, you can stop half of it and still be not sick, but you can't be well. Well, we, our medical system doesn't distinguish generally between sick, between not sick and well. Well, you're not sick. Come back when you're feeling worse, and yeah. we'll see if you're actually sick. But you want, we want to be well. We want to find out what's the genetic potential of the body. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so we have this tenth of a hertz, we have this one hertz, and we have a 10 hertz. So this is a, a decimal, a 10 to 1 ratio in frequency, a kind of harmonic, just like octaves are a, a doubling, a doubling frequency in, in sound and music. And that A note sounds like that A note, only one's higher than the other. And there's a transfer of energy. If you play that one A note and you have another open A string, energy is going to transfer through space, through the movement of the air, and this string is going to vibrate. You're going to get resonance. There's energy trans. There's communication, biocommunication through these harmonics. So the lung communicates to the heart, and you see the lung tenth of a hertz cycle in the heart rhythm when it's in a harmonic state. And and likewise, from the the lung and the heart, our, our oxygen, our blood mm -hmm. supply, our basic support systems, being harmonic. We have a, a 10 hertz cycle in the skeletal muscles, the muscles of the eye, which are also striated muscles. Heart muscle is also a striated muscle. We have uh, the, the brain, which is a kind of muscle-like function. The nerve cells have this firing. They've got, there's even you know, actin and myosin fibers in the cells. And, and it has a, an alpha rhythm cycle of 10 hertz. So the whole body, from the muscles to the brain, has this 10 hertz cycle of, of rest, of relaxation, of centering, the balance, of harmony that goes along with the 10 second cycle of the breath and the one second cycle of the heart. So that's a, a decimal harmonic system of three decades, three decades. We have built on that, I'm seeing a harmonic system that's a different ratio, not a decimal system, but more of a classical octave harmonic, more like a sound frequency harmonic of octaves that we're accustomed to, that starts with the alpha rhythm just a little above that rest. When we move just above rest, just toward beta, the beta rhythm, which is active thinking, when we move from the balanced heart to digest some input that has meaning to us and think about it, we move into the beta frequency of thought. And as we do, we move through this harmonic of 10.75 hertz is where I calculate it to be. And we need to explore this. There's, 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 it's an open field for research, uh, along with these other relationships very much. Uh, at 10.75 hertz, we hit a harmonic, a precise octave harmonic of two things. One, we know sp precisely, and, and needs lots of research, but the, the ancient Chinese and Tibetans knew and they, they, they used 172 hertz to tune the entire, uh, the entire uh, empire of China for a thousand years. And they called it a thousand years of peace while this was happening. And this was the most precious thing. The one most thing, you can replace the emperor, but the most precious thing the emperor is living with in his sanctuary and guarding is the bell that rings at 172 hertz because that is the dominant harmonic frequency of nature. And if you copy that as they did every spring and send those copies out to each province and make your music from that bass note and make your, your tools and instruments and everything you can harmonic with that, you have peace. Why? It stimulates the consciousness of 
of God, of, of the universe, of the spheres that, that we are made of. This stimulates consciousness of consciousness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The harmony of nature is what they called it. So uh, you know, when everybody's in tune, we don't have to wonder, I wonder what I'm supposed to be doing. I wonder what God would want me to do. I wonder what they would like. You know, if we're just doing what's harmonic, not just for ourselves, not a selfish thing, but in service to ourselves as well as others. When we're in highest service, it's what's good for everyone, ourselves included. We don't have to double think it, we don't have to wonder. Uh, so, and there may be ages, there may be cosmic time periods where that's something that happens more naturally, where because of the music of the spheres, that it's easy, you don't have to think about that. That apparently, in my view, is what's coming. We can get ready for it. Maybe this is part of that, understanding what's coming and being patient about it and building our harmony with that uh, future rather than being frustrated and fighting what we see in the present. We can accept, oh, okay, I see. I see it in the big picture. That's what's happening. Well, of course it is. And I see what's changing. I see how we're get re getting ready to be in a world of peace, of one world order, not of domination of one over another, but a one world order of peace, of harmony. That's a different kind of one world order. The, the, the first kind lasts only for a short time anyway. And the other, we know historically, can last a long time. It's coherent, it's stable. So, so on that 10.75 hertz, beginning to move up from alpha rhythm center, we have, if we double it, we get 23, uh, 20, sorry, uh, 21.5 hertz. We're in beta, we're like in active thinking. We move another octave, uh, yeah, another octave, we're at 43 hertz, which is in the center of the gamma range. We haven't heard so much about the gamma, but it's in, in consciousness studies now, we're, they're finding that the gamma range is highly associated with consciousness. And it's related to a cycling, an electrical movement of cycling of information between the, what I call the heart of the brain, where the, 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 the cardiovascular system supplies a highly vascular tissue called the choroid plexus at the center of the brain, right in, the, in the, this antenna-like structure that you, that you see depicted in the eye of Ra in, in ancient Egypt. Uh, we have an eye like the pineal and this structure, this curved structure that's an, an antenna shape that's filled with cerebrospinal fluid, the ventricles, in the middle of the, middle of the brain. It's a wonderful receiver, antenna, transmitter, filled with liquid crystal water and other, some other things. Um, that, that frequency of 43 hertz being at the, the center of that range is is the frequency of sharing of information between the heart of the brain, where we have the, the pulse waves that a craniosacral therapist is looking to feel expressed through the entire central nervous system, where we have harmony and balance in the nervous system, and which is similar to the breath cycle, similar to that 0.1 hertz frequency, and, and, and uh, between that and the cortex, the conscious, which, where we have the the, the metal element would be the sensorium, where we, the visual cortex and the other sensory cortex is in the back. The association cortex, where we're making relationship with it, with what we see or hear in our heart. Is it friend or foe? Who? You know, what is it? Oh, well, who, who is it? <laughs> is that me? Is that not me? Do I want it to be me? Do I not, not want it to be me? Do I want to move toward it or away from it? Do I want to expand that or have less of that? So um, that just brings up the question, if we're like in fight or flight, what, what frequency does our body go to? We're, we're out of those harmonics. We're in, we're in an emergency mode. What, what, what hertz does it it, it, go, it goes up. We're in beta mode, uh -huh. so, so fast, faster. We've, we've gone through that activation of consciousness, for sure. And so we're, we're conscious, but we're not harmonic. We are activated. It's like we've got, we've got the pedal to the metal. Yeah. We've got, we want full energy for external activation. So if we're in that stress mode and we're, our body's not moving, if we're stressed in our seat as a child in a classroom, it's that all that energy is going to do damage to our structure. We're, we're not able to learn. When, the more we're stressed... Like as a child, when you're still growing, what type of damage? Well, damage to, to your development, damage physically, but also damage spiritually because the consciousness is, is, is lessened. We're, our energy is activated for action, 
you know, for the muscles, yeah, they're, like not, they're, not in, they're not in their alpha rhythm, they're not in, in the resting mode. They're, both, both sets of muscles will be activated. You're in isometric tension. Mm -hmm. So you're creating tension. And if that's chronic, that creates strain, that creates spinal problems, it creates dental problems, it creates visual problems because of the strain on the tissues mm -hmm. over time. And we know that from uh, Daryl Harmon's work in, in the Texas school system back in the 1950s documented when, when they had a classroom, where they could create a classroom where the environment was harmonic, where the light was balanced from different quadrants on, of the uh, shining on the eye, and the posture could be balanced, and the seats were adjustable for the body, and it could be relaxed, and you could adjust the height of the desk and the angle of the desk for different tasks to be appropriate for good body dynamics, the children were healthier and they learned better. And when the schools across America didn't buy those desks enough to keep the, the I think it was American Standard Company in business because they cost five dollars more a desk, well, we have what we have. We have all kinds of health problems. But they showed that those health problems started with distortion of the posture and the vision and the dental. You know, if you're if you're working like this on a school desk, how are, how is your dentistry not going to be skewed? through mm -hmm. development, when that's happening every day, hour after hour. The spinal problems were monitored by the chiropractors, the visual problems were monitored by the optometrists in the study, and they saw them coming in one after another at, at different ages, but mm -hmm. sequentially as the body distorted around those stresses. Right. So constrained performance, like in our culture where you sit still, pay attention here, and, and don't look out the window, even though that's where the light's coming from. There's a blank wall here, and there's a bunch of bright light there. Well, organismically, we're heliocentric. We want to center the amount of light on the four quadrants of the retina. We're going to look over there. No, don't do that. Don't turn your chair that way either. You know. So, so the asymmetries do damage physically. But under stress, we know uh, that the perceptual fields constrict. Why? There, there's less. There's less circulation, there's less oxygen going there. It's going somewhere else, it's going to the, the muscles, it's going to the adrenals. It's not going to digestion, it's not going to awareness and thinking. We're not able to think if you're under stress. You know, you could be under stress and looking for your keys and your perceptual fields are so constricted that you can't feel them in your hand. Right? We've all experienced that, we know it's true. And there's studies that, that have shown that. Uh, so we see less, we remember less, we become generally less efficient under stress. And that stress could be refined sugar. You know, one can of soda drops test scores on a test uh, a couple of levels. Uh, drops IQ scores mm -hmm. significantly. Uh, so all kinds of stresses in our culture, and many of them chronic, which is, is a real, real problem, because those stress responses of fight, fright, flight are designed for short-term survival right. under yeah. survival conditions. In, in, in a natural environment and where those are external demands. Not your default demands. setting. <laughs> not your default <laughs> setting and not in a, a lack of uh, a, a situation of constraint against movement mm -hmm. and use of the energy. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, we were at 43 hertz being the cycle between the heart of the brain where we have consciousness related to our emotional state. You know, the heart, what does it mean to me? What's, who, who is this? Is this self or not self? Is this good or bad, or judgment? Mm 